Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this section, you'll see how to configure port channels, ether channel with a lab demo. So I'm using the same lab topology that I used in the spanning tree section. So we've got our two core distribution layer switches, CD1 and CD2, and we've got a couple of axis layer switches, axis three and axis four. I've already set up the VLANs and the trunks. I've configured CD1 as the spanning tree root bridge primary and CD2 as the spanning tree root bridge secondary. So if you have a look at the diagram here, you can see from both AC3 and access layer switch four that they've got four uplinks but there's only actually one of them which is active in forwarding traffic. On both of them, it's an interface which is facing CD1 because CD1 is the root bridge. So I've got four uplinks there, but I'm only able to use the bandwidth from one, so I want to improve on that. So I'm going to create a port channel from Axis 3 going up to CD1. I'm also going to create a different port channel from Axis 3 going up to CD2. It's going to a different switch, so it's going to be a different port channel. And then from Axis 4, I'll configure its port channels, one going to CD1 and one going to CD2. The first port channel I'll do from Axis 3 to CD1, and I'll use LACP for that. So it's going to be on interfaces on axis 3, fast 0, slash 23, and 24, and it's the same on the CD1 side as well. So I'm going to be configuring them with the same matching configuration. I'll then do the port channel from axis 3 to CD2, and I'll use PAGP for this one. Now, real world, hopefully it's obvious that would be an insane thing to do, you would always standardize on one protocol for your port channels, and it's recommended to use LACP. You can use static if one side doesn't support LACP. But for the lab demo, I wanna show you all the different protocols. So I'll do the first one with LACP. I'll do the second one with PAGP. The third port channel will go from axis four up to CD2 on the same side, on the right-hand side of the topology. I'll use static for that, so you'll see all three. And we've got one left over, so I'll use LACP for that again. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna configure. So let's start off on our switch axis three. I'll do the first port channel, so that's gonna be LACP up to CD1 on interfaces fast, 0 slash 23 and 24. So I'll go on to the axis 3 switch, if I can find it in here, there it is. And actually let's do a show spanning tree first as well, so we can check this. So I'll do a show spanning tree, and my PCs are in VLAN 10, so let's do a show spanning tree VLAN 10, and I can see that I am forwarding on fast zero slash one, actually, actually facing down towards the PC. Let's do a show run and check the config and interface fast zero slash one. Yeah, that all looks good. So it's in VLAN 10, switch port mode access facing down to the PC. So the four uplinks are fast zero slash 21 to 24, and only one of them is forwarding now that's a port that is connected to CD1, which is my root bridge. So let's put this into an ether channel. So I'll go to global config, interface range fast zero slash 23 to 24 is what's connected to CD1. And to put these in a port channel, it's channel group one mode, 
and then I want it to be LHCP, so I'll make the mode active. And as soon as I do that, it creates the port channel interface for me. So if I now do a do show IP interface brief, I can see up at the top there, I've now got this new port channel interface. And I need to configure my interface level settings on the port channel. So to do that, I'll go to interface, port, you can just do PO as shorthand, interface PO1 for port channel one. And then on here, I want to say switch port mode trunk, because it's connecting to another switch. And switch port, trunk native VLAN 199 is the native VLAN we're using. I would also set the allowed VLANs on here normally as well in a production environment. Okay, so that's it done on the access free side. Let's do it on the other side of the links, which is on CD1. I'm going to put in the exact same configuration here. So config T and it's interface range fast 0 slash 23 to 24. Now, the interfaces on both sides don't have to be the same number interface. It could have been interface fast 0 slash 9 and 10 on this side and 23 and 24 on the other side, and that will work just fine. But it's best and easiest, if possible, you can use the same interface number on both sides. It just makes it easier for us as human administrators to understand what's going on. Okay, so I've specified my interfaces and then channel group one mode active. I could say passive here, but it's best practice to do active on both sides and then you can't get them mixed up. I see the port channel comes up. I'm getting a native VLAN mismatch command because I haven't configured it yet. So let's do that now. So I'll go to interface port channel one, switch port mode trunk, and switch port trunk native VLAN 199. And I see it unblocks it because I've got the same native VLAN on both sides now, so that looks good. So now the next thing to do is check that the port channel came up okay. So I'll do a show ether channel summary. And this all looks good, that's what I wanted to see. For port channel one SU, which means it's a layer two interface, and the U is for in use, which basically means it's up. And it's ports fast 0 slash 23 and 24, and they are both in the port channel. So that all looks good. So that was my LACP configuration. Next, let's do PAGP from Access Free going up to switch CD2. So I've got on my command line here, and this is going to be interface range fast 0 slash 21 to 22 is the interfaces that are connected over to the CD2 switch on the right hand side. And I'll say channel group, now I've already used one, so I'll use two for the next one, and I'll say mode desirable to make it PAGP. I see the port channel is created. And then I go on to the interface, port channel two now, switch port mode trunk, and switch port trunk native VLAN 199. I need to make sure I configure matching settings on the other side, which is over on CD2. So we'll config T and it's interface fast zero slash 21 to 22. You can hopefully see the benefit of using the same interfaces on both sides now. I'm not really having to think about it. I know that it is the same on both sides. And I just forgot to put in the range keyword there. So I specify the range and I'm using the same on both sides. So it's nice and logical. It saves me getting confused and mixing things up. And channel group. Now I haven't created a port channel in here yet. But because I used two on the other side, I'm going to use two on this side as well. Again, to keep things logical. So channel group two mode desirable. This is also a PAGP. Then I need to go to interface port channel two this time and switch port mode trunk, switch port trunk, native VLAN 199. 
Okay, so that is my first two done. Let's check it came up okay. So show ether channel summary. And this one's up as well. It's all good too. So that's first two done. Next up, I'll go on to access four and I'll configure the port channel going up the same right hand side of the topology. So I go to global config and it's interface range fast zero slash 23 to 24 on the right hand side and channel group one mode. I'll make this static this time so it's gonna be on. And that is my static configured. I can now go to interface port channel one switch port mode trunk and switch port trunk native VLAN 199. I need to configure the other side of this link which is on CD2. So I'll go to global config. It's interface range fast 0 slash 23 to 24 and then channel group one mode on and i'm seeing i'm getting an error message here that fast 23 is not compatible because of dtp mode well if i have a look at my interfaces so i'll do a show run and i can see on interface fast 0 slash 23 and 24 that the settings are the same on there and they're the same on the other side as well so this is just a glitch with the packet tracer. The, the, the ether channel should come up in a second anyway. So let's just complete the configuration. So I'll go config T and then interface port channel one, switch port mode trunk and switch port trunk native VLAN 199 and that should get rid of that error message yeah that looks good and then if I do a show ether channel summary and yeah I can see that it did come up there sometimes when you first configure this in packet tracer when you do the static it might throw that error message at you but just complete the configuration anyway you might have to give it a minute and then the port channel should come up so there's the port channel I created earlier, the PAGP one, which is going to access three. And this is the static that I just configured going down to access four. You can see where it shows a dash for the protocol. That means that it is static. Okay, so that's my first three port channels configured. I've verified that they're up and working. I'll do the fourth one, which is going to be another LACP as well. You don't need to see me doing that because you already saw me configure it. So I'll see you back here for the next lecture where we'll have a look at how this is going to affect spanning tree. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free, right now then you can enroll in my ccna gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description it also includes full study notes quizzes and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else